I did my three miles in the sun, soaked up all that solar energy. I want to take advantage of the sun as, as, as long as it's still here. Because I know if it's snow like that, you'd be looking out the window, sunshine in Colorado. Five minutes later, snow's coming down. <clears throat> so you carry a jacket everywhere you go. You carry like a blanket in your car because you never know when that's going to happen. This is Coop. The shirt is by Coop, one of my favorite artists. I don't have any tattoos, but if I did, it would probably be one of my own design or a Coop. Um, I, don't, I chose not to have tattoos for a reason because if you're an actor, you need to be a blank slate. If you get a bunch of tattoos, especially an excess of tattoos and in the wrong places, <coughs> excuse me, you, um, the, and the director, that's not what the director wants, then they have to pay a makeup man to cover that tattoo up and it's just another reason for them not to hire you. If you're somebody like The Rock, you know, you can do anything you want, or Jason Momoa, that's fine. And I like tattoos on other people, but um, my tattoo is just not having a tattoo. I want to talk about the symbol, symbolism of colors and uh, specifically let's start with the rainbow when I was very young the rainbow was where Dorothy managed to get over to which seemed like coming home to her because suddenly everything that had been black and white was in color and I knew that I had come from over the rainbow and that one day I would return there as I grew older, I started to study uh, world, world religions and mythology. Um, to the Christians, the rainbow is uh, what appeared to Noah after the ark uh, successfully, safely landed. And it was a symbol of the covenant between man and God that man would never pull that flood shit anymore because next time it's going to be fire. Um, moving on to the Greeks, um, Iris... Her symbol was the rainbow, and she was the messenger of the gods. So when you saw a rainbow, there was a message coming, or maybe the rainbow itself meant, you know, there's some kind of message to be had here in this situation. Um, I remember when Jesse Jackson was running for president, and I, uh, you know, I was going to vote for him, and he, his uh, group was called the Rainbow Coalition. So there was rainbow flags everywhere, and this stood, uh, the rainbow uh, meant to represent all the different colors of all the races of the earth as one, as one people. And I could really get behind that too. And now, with uh, the advent of the Thor movies, everybody's familiar with the Bifrost Bridge, which is the rainbow bridge that connects Asgard with Midgard. So in that one movie, was it um, Ragnarok? No, it was before that, when he took on Hela. Um, he's trying to, he takes Mjolnir, and starts to shatter the rainbow bridge. And I was like, you can't do that. Uh, it's totally unscientific. Totally all credibility just right out the window there. Because Mjolnir could not destroy the rainbow bridge. I couldn't even destroy the rainbow bridge with the legions at my command. So Thor sure as hell couldn't do it. Um, in uh, Elizabethan times, colors were very coded. Um, the colors that you wore sh were a demonstration of your social class. So to start at the top, um, the queen, only the queen, got to wear purple. Um, the cloth itself was very expensive to make, and the only other time you would see anybody wearing purple would be like a favor uh, that the queen had bestowed upon you in some ceremony. It was a, a very high honor. But only the queen wore purple. Even the highest nobles wore black. And black cloth was also very expensive. And in the Southern California heat, that shit is hot, especially if you're a Puritan. Um, I never wore a rough, those thing, white ruffly things that go around and were so popular at the time. Christopher Marlowe wore a lawn collar, which I don't know if that was French. He was assigned to France for a long time on Her Majesty's Secret Service. So he may have been influenced by French fashions and being gay. How could he help it? Um, so purple was the color of royalty since even back as far as Julius Caesar. Uh, Caesar wrestled with wearing a, a mantle that was kind of purple, but not too purple. Because he didn't want to come across as a, you know, someone who wanted to like be dictator for life or king. Um, and then that continued into Elizabethan times. You know, purple was the color of royalty, and that's it. Um, red, you wouldn't find around court a lot. 
it was associated with scarlet women and uh, was considered, well, it was also expensive because red cloth was made by squishing onto white cloth these little beetles, a specific type of beetle that squished red over a gazillion times. That'd be a great job for an OCD person or like someone who liked to pop bubble wrap. Just um, my friend Vicki McQuarrie uh, wore red one year, and I said, well, how do you justify this to Chris Seda? She was the costume mistress. And she said, I just said that me father was a beetle farmer. But it, it, if, you, the, if you would see like a cardinal in the church wearing red, for one thing, you'd have to be in Italy because they didn't have cardinals in Elizabethan England. But uh, in Italy, to wear all those red vestments and the red cap, the red mantle, the whole red thing meant that, that some poor motherfucker peasant had squished about a gazillion beetles into Beetlejuice. 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 It's showtime. <laughs> so it must have been hard not to laugh thinking of that and seeing these holy men walking by just covered with Beetlejuice. Um, so different symbols mean different things to different people so be careful when you judge someone I have a royal right by birthright to wear purple because of my descent from King Rollo and King Henry the seventh therefore when I wear purple you will keep your eyes downcast in our presence <laughs>